Another very important point, the hatred that we have in our hearts for, for one another. The jealousy, the envy, it's a waste of our time. Life comes once. We don't have room to hate each other. Some people don't talk to their brothers and cousins and uncles for years on end. They cannot solve a problem. Sometimes we need to say, I'm sorry, even though you know you're not wrong. When we are doing things that are unnecessary, we have a lot of stress, tension in the mind. So remove those things that are unnecessary. We give the example of the pot. Each one of us, we have a capacity like a huge pot. And in our lives, there are things that are equivalent to sand, things equivalent to stones, things equivalent to rocks. The most important things, the rocks, the big ones. If you put the rocks in first, you will be able to get the stones into the spaces of those that the rocks have created when they're in. And then you can put the sand and it will all fit in because you prioritized. But start with the sand, then what happens? You've got no place. No place. When you put the stones in, the rocks are all out. The most important things are out. And this is why a lot of people who complain about lack of concentration in Salah, I tell them, you have unnecessary things in your brain. Take them out. Can I tell you what's one of the biggest and this I'm being open. We're speaking to young people and this is a message to carry elsewhere. I'd like to hope we're not guilty of what I'm about to say because it's a big one. But we, we are to carry it to others. One of the biggest reasons why people do not even want to read Salah is pornography. May Allah protect us, our offspring, our colleagues, our children. People don't realize it has such a big impact such a huge impact on, on the mind on the emotions on the spirituality on everything we do on our thinking on the way we look at the opposite sex everything changes and it changes quite badly and the worst thing is we stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we've lost concentration then we say Sheikh give me a dua I need to concentrate my brother my sister a single dua without doing something about it will not solve your problem and this is why don't wait to turn to Allah. You know, if we wait to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we wait to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we may never ever get that opportunity. So one thing we should never wait for is to turn to Allah. When we do not have proper objectives and goals in life, we waste a lot of time. We don't know what exactly we want. We don't know where exactly we want to reach. And we don't work towards it. Some people know, I'd like to do this, I'd like to do that. And they don't work towards it. If you don't work towards it, you're wasting time. You're wasting all your time. Because before you know it, you would have, time would be finished and you would not have achieved what you wanted. So it's important for us to have proper objectives. And secondly, a point I touched on, your company, your companions, they are also a big obstacle. If you mix with like-minded people who have similar goals and objectives, you will get there with greater ease. Also, being involved in that which is glamorous, that which shines, that which glitters, and chasing it. We heard about the dunya. Those who chase the dunya, let me inform you, it has no end. And we like fools keep running behind. You know, I pictured it once in my mind. I'd seen a load of rats running behind. A cheese, a piece of cheese. And as they got the cheese, there was one smelling stronger in front. So they threw this one and they carried on. And they threw the other one. But eat from this cheese and be full at least. I hope you understand what I'm saying. You've got your cheese, the first cheese you've got. And what happens? It goes to motor vehicles, it goes to cell phones. And after that, it goes to your spouse. Why? You've got a wife. Oh, she's 1990 model. I need, um, now, I need a better, a later model. Why? You developed your habit of wanting the latest. So when you see your wife, she no longer appeals to you. When you see your husband, he no longer appeals. Why? Just like your phone. It no longer appeals. I seen a dude down the road with a bed of jeans, halfway down his butt, mashallah. May Allah protect us. Who you are and your role that you are meant to play, your objective is made by other people, your friends, your peers, and the media in particular. Every time there is a, you know, a movie, they come up with a new type of dress code and a new hairstyle, and then you have all these hedgehogs in the classroom. Another very, very important point. Some people have a habit of starting something. Before they've finished it, they start something else. And starting a third thing before they finish the second. 
when you do something do it properly complete it and then go for something else this means when you do something do a thorough job some people and I do know they start a course two years down the line no I don't want to do this course go to another one they do another course and two years down the line I don't want to do well look if it happened to you once probably maybe it was the wrong field maybe you've now chosen the right one but finish something finish it and your best bet is choose properly from the beginning always up but that's what it's all about time is never enough never ever. let's use it inshallah in the right direction let us make sure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Meaning, let us make sure that we call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us goodness. Once we have used our time properly and we learn to be systematic in, in our life, we will feel so good. We will be able to achieve our goals. You know, we will be able to achieve something in life, be happy. We will be able to make sure that every moment we have had has been used in the right direction. And this is why don't wait to turn to Allah. You know, if we wait to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we wait to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we may never ever get that opportunity. So one thing we should never wait for is to turn to Allah. You know the sisters, subhanAllah, even the brothers, sometimes there's a religious decision we need to make. Make it now. Don't say, okay, I'm not, you know, holy enough. I don't, I still want to enjoy my life. I still want to, you know, I, I cannot go for Hajj now. I still need to do this. No. It must happen now, N-O-W. If it doesn't come now, it may never ever come. There are so many examples of it. So if you want to get to a higher spiritual level, let it happen now. So one might ask, what are the benefits of Tawbah? Do you know that the benefits of Tawbah, one of them is that you will be granted sustenance. The wealth that we want so much. If we engage in istighfar and we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will give it to us or He will give us barakah in the wealth. Listen to what Nuh alayhi salatu was salam told his people in another place in the Quran. This is in Surah Nuh. This is in Surah Nuh told his people engage in istighfar, engage in tawbah and you will find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most forgiving. He will send the rain as a result of your repentance. So when we want rain, we need to ask Allah's forgiveness. Then the rain will come. And over and above that, He will grant you lots of wealth and He will grant you offspring who will be the coolness of your eyes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant that to us. And then he says on top of that, he will grant us Jannah in the Akhirah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant that to us as well. Don't relate this good news to your brothers. Because they might plan and plot against you. They might become jealous of you. What do we learn from this? Those were the children of a Nabi. And something good, he told his son, don't tell the others. When something good happens to us, we don't even have to tell our family members sometime until we've achieved something. Sometimes we're planning to go somewhere. Who says that you have to inform everyone? No, it depends on how important that journey is. You don't have to always inform everyone of your next move. You don't have to tell them about your business deals. You don't have to tell them about anything. You should seek assistance in fulfilling your needs by being secretive to a certain extent. You don't have to tell everyone everything because shaitan is bad. They might be good. <laughs> shaitan is an outright clear enemy against man. So even if a person does not want to be jealous, you find that sometimes shaitan puts in a spear, an arrow, in interferes and makes a person jealous. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make us jealous. When a person has a child, for example, a little baby, for those who are newly married, who have children, alhamdulillah, if the baby sleeps all night, you don't have to tell the whole world, you know what, that baby, mashallah, sleeps all night. From that night on, the baby might not sleep because Ain and the evil eye might attack that baby. You can say, look, that's a normal child. You know, they sleep. You know how children sleep. So you haven't lied, alhamdulillah. At the same time, when, it, when something good happens, you don't have to tell everyone. And if you tell them, make sure they say, MashaAllah in front of you, don't be shy to say, say MashaAllah. Yeah. He was thrown into this pit. 
and they picked him up. When they picked him up, what does Allah say? They regarded him as merchandise. And they said, no, this will make money out of this. You know, sometimes when we pick up lost property, what do we do? Very valuable. You pick up a blank check. It tells you a million rands. What do you do? Very tempting. May Allah grant us Iman. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst those who can hand it back. You know what happens sometimes like what we read in the newspapers in countries like these you find you hand back a large amount of money to the cop shop to the policeman sometimes it disappears from there but don't worry so long as you didn't steal it may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us so the same applies here these people what do we learn from them they looked at an innocent boy a very handsome man they said no we'll make money out of this come bring him into this they sold him at the next market someone bought him a very wealthy man bought him and in a nutshell what had happened the wife of this minister of egypt had an evil intention when she saw this handsome man handsome yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam she says you know what he's a worker for us he works for us let me advance sexually how many of us are guilty of making sexual advances at the workplace let's be honest this lesson comes from surah yusuf whether it is male or female is besides the point the lesson is don't ever make sexual advances that are haram especially at the workplace if someone is working for you and don't think that this person here is actually under me so let me try my luck allahu akbar may allah safeguard us look at the example who would have guessed that we learned this from it that whenever our eyes and our gaze is not controlled and we happen to look at the opposite sex more than what we are allowed in that case it will result in destruction of one way or another let me give you an example sometimes you're driving your motor vehicle and someone happens to pass quite good looking and you turn you might bump the car in front of you it can happen why it's similar to cutting the hand it will cause bodily harm material harm it will cause lots of harm it's a fact sometimes if you engage in an act you might end up with a huge disease may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us so this is a lesson to say anyone who wants to follow that path there is destruction coming your way do you know that we are taught by rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam that when you have wealth a salary at the end of the month or wealth and there is no barakah in it no barakah at all ask yourself you probably engaged in a sin you're probably oiling some of your bad habits maybe casino maybe gambling maybe drinking maybe nightclubs maybe drugs maybe a woman maybe someone of the opposite sex you need to pay money you need to look after someone more than what allah has shouldered upon you how can there be barakah in your wealth so if you find your money is running away quickly leave the sins and you will find that 500 rands will last the whole month you'll still have 450 inshallah may allah grant us barakah in imagine our the hadith says Allah will grant the shade of his arsh on the day of Qiyamah to a man whom when a lady who is very good looking and wealthy and well to do who has a high status in society calls him towards sin and she says look he says look I fear Allah Allah says on the day of Qiyamah I will call him out by name everyone will be wondering what is this man called out for by name Allahu Akbar Allah says come come this day of heat you will be under the air conditioning system allahu akbar under the shade of my own arsh allahu akbar may allah grant it. this is the interpretation of the dream that i had in the very beginning of the sun the moon and the 11 stars so the sun was depicting the father of the house the moon was depicting the mother of the house and we've got to listen to this carefully and the stars were depicting the 11 children if you take a look at the qualities of the sun strong powerful it shines everyone feels secure in the presence of the sun we go out we work we earn sustenance we come back we feel so secure that is those are the qualities of the sun every father in every home needs to have the qualities that the sun outside has he needs to present give the warmth in the house the sense of security bring in the sustenance make everyone feel secure and make them feel well don't we feel so good when the sun is out we run around without any fear alhamdulillah those are the qualities that allah has kept in the sun they are supposed to be in every successful father of every home the moon beautiful you can look at it mashallah you can admire it the moon the light of the moon is solely derived from the sun do we know that the, sh the brighter the sun the more you see of the moon so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept the example of the moon the example of the successful mother in the house the stars who are the children you don't see them during the daylight if you look at the sun you won't be able to see it directly you will probably need some glasses 
That is the respect of the father in the house. Not to say we shouldn't look at him, but we respect him. But when the moon is out, the stars are twinkling, mashallah. It shows the closeness of relation between the children and the mother. Alhamdulillah. Let's try and understand this example. It's a very deep example. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us successful mothers, amazingly, they should be having the qualities of the moon. Can I give you one more jewel that we extract? The moon goes through a 28 day cycle. Precisely. Some days it's not there. Some days it's there. The same applies to a woman. She goes through a 28 day cycle. Some days she is there. Some days she is not there. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the true understanding. Wallahi, when Allah gives an example, it is a perfect example that fits. And if we think that it is not a perfect example, we need to revisit our intellect because the creator cannot make a mistake. The stars, alhamdulillah, we've seen. Now let me tell you, and we want to end with this. Inshallah, I might mention one verse of Surah Al-Ra'd, seeing that I've taken a little bit more time because it's an interesting surah today. Very interesting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us yet another example. When we mix the roles, when father wants to play role of mother and mother wants to play role of father, what happens? There is chaos and confusion. They are fighting. The children lose the most. Don't we agree? The children suffer the most because these two have now confused their roles. So when the sun goes into the place of the moon, the moon goes into the place of the sun. We have an eclipse where you can see neither of them. Amazing. And what happens? The stars are nowhere to be seen when there is an eclipse. The same way when we mix up our roles that Allah has given us, we have what is known as a social eclipse, chaos in the house. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from that sign of Qiyamah. In the same way that an eclipse is a sign of Qiyamah, we are supposed to be engaging in Salah and Istighfar and Tawbah. When the eclipse is there outside, when there is a social eclipse in the house, that is also a sign of Qiyamah. We need to be engaging in Istighfar and Tawbah and Salah until the condition returns to normal. That is Surah Yusuf. Thank you so much for listening to this short message. I pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope and the same applies to all of us. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.